Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss about bulbous bow. And my idea behind discussion is not to teach you all. My idea behind is that what you all can answer to the surveyor. So I may not be explaining things much because the idea here not to because you know all those things. The only idea is that how you need to present and what all points need to be presented to the surveyor. So you must have seen this protruding portion in front in the forward part of the vessel. It's a very important thing uh, in older days if you recall about Titanic and all this was not available and this was not present later on with developments and all in ship construction it came into picture so we are going to discuss about uh, what is the signif what is a bulbous bow what is the significance of bulbous bow different types of bulbous bow and we are also going to see how it is its a internal construction is I'll be covering a separate uh, thing in a uh, separate video about panting and pounding arrangement. That is also a favorite question. Sometimes you may get question on bulbous bow. That what is a bulbous bow? What is the significance of it? Why even Morse Klein was the first one to remove all these bulb uh, from their tanker ships because later on they discovered. Uh, we'll be discussing all those reasons also here. So let's go. Okay, when we talk about uh, bulbous bow, see whenever a ship is surging so this wave that you are seeing is known as a calvin wave calvin wave okay we are going to discuss it and i have showed you into the diagram the waves are basically traveling form of energy now you imagine in a engine is making uh, engine is generating power it is giving to the shaft and then shaft is giving to the propeller propeller is trying uh, rotating and then trying to move the ship and then with the uh, but where other rest of the energy is going the rest of the energy is going in the excitation and the movement of these energizing these particles okay particles of water and these energized particles that creates wave okay the waves are basically traveling form of energy in water medium it is moving mass of a ship that energize the water particle to form the waves this is also called wave making resistance so this is known as wave making resistance the energized particle of water that creates wave that is known as wave making resistance of a ship and this the energy by the vessel goes into overcoming this wave making resistance now when there is a ship with straight bow as we discussed in titanic it was a straight flat as the uh, ship surges forward the water particle moved towards the stern along the entire length of the ship so now what is happening as the ship is moving now this is this cuts the water so what is happening these water is moving entire length of the ship in a streamline manner okay now what is happening here is that but if uh, but what if there is no bulb what will happen uh, all the other water particle that is beside it okay if imagine there is no bulb present over here so it will be like till here it will be straight these water particles those are present here they will go in a streamline manner but what about the particle which will come again straight here and then hit because it's a flat portion so in that case center line of the stem its instantaneous velocity is zero it is coming and then its instantaneous velocity is zero which is which in scientific term is known as stagnation point so that will create a stagnation point so if you recall bernoulli's equation i have already covered bernoulli principle and archimedes uh, principle and all those principle in a separate thing the pressure at a stagnation point will be higher so pressure here will be become higher so the pressure of vertical particle at the bow is higher thus giving rise to the crest of a wave we are going to see in the diagram so what is happening wave so sinusoidal wave so you see your sinusoidal will be like this coming and down so this is known as the crest and this is known as the trough okay so this here is creating the crest okay the pressure at the stagnation point will be higher so the pressure of the water particle at the bow is higher thus giving rise to the crest of a wave this is called as bow wave so this wave that is created because of stagnation point and be, uh, why because of at stagnation point there is a generation of crest wave because of Bernoulli's equation so that is known as what is known as bow wave okay now remember this bow wave we are going to see it so with the straight bow there is always a wave continuously formed with its crest at the bow thus 
whenever there is a straight bow then what is happening there is always a there is always a wave that is being created you see here now this is the wave generated by bulb so here is the bulb and here you see this the crest that is generated okay and this is the wave that is being generated because of the bow bow portion when we have it in a straight portion thus it is evident that we are wasting a part of energy power in generating this wave so it is uh, so we are wasting a portion in generating this wave and overcoming this friction if we introduced another discontinuity so what we are doing we are introducing a discontinuity any ship structure below the water line which disturb the laminar flow okay so it is a laminar flow so what we are doing we are creating we are now this is the wave that is generated because of the straight portion now we have we have introduced a bulb here that is bulbous bow and that is generating what is known as so you see here these are uh, just cancelling each other for each trough there is uh, crest there is a trough for each crest there is a trough okay so these are different different so it is cancelling each other now so because of this don't below the water line in the wave in front of the stem of the ship that is continuity will itself give rise to another wave at its foremost point since the stem is still at the water line it will generate normal bow wave now what if we can design the shape and position of discontinuity in such a way so that the bow wave and the wave created by the discontinuity result in a destructive interference so they are interference we have already seen well that is pretty much uh, principle behind the design of bulbous bow the destructive interference so remember this term destructive interference so what is so bulbous bow is creating this what is known as the destructive interference okay <clears throat> the reduced wave making of the ship and further and which further reduces the wave making drag of the hull form so it is creating destructive wave and reducing the wave making hull form in the preliminary stage of development of bulb the primary mission of the design was to reduce the wave making drag so earlier it was just to reduce the wave making drag the function of this bulb Uh, now uh, already a video has been covered for finer hull form that is container ship and that uh, 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 what is known as the your uh, bulk carrier the difference between a container ship and a bulk carrier is being already covered prominent kelvin uh, now this prominent kelvin wave in cruise ship liner yacht and naval cruiser notice a bulk carrier on an oil tanker fuller form vessels so tankers are fuller form it is evident that these hull form do not show prominent kelvin wave pattern so they don't have this kelvin wave pattern because the water line width at the stem itself is so large or in other words the discontinuity in flow is higher that the pressure rises to a level such that the bow wave height exceeds the threshold up to which a wave holds its property in this case the wave breaks right at the bow itself even before it travels before the ship's length now you see here so are fuller hull form more energy uh, energy efficient in the respect no do fuller form have high wave making resistance no do fuller form uh, have high wave breaking resistance yes wave breaking yes uh, with this application bulbs were also introduced in bulkers and tankers to reduce their wave breaking resistance so in bulk carrier also in tankers also this bulb was introduced the bulbous bow to uh, reduce their wave breaking resistance types of bulb so when we talk about it is often necessary to reduce the resistance caused by upper side of the bulbous bow which project above the uh, center water line so what is happening you must have seen sometimes the bulbous bow is completely submerged and sometimes it is above the water line creating strong turbulence the aim should be a fin effect where the upper surface of the bulb runs downward towards the perpendicular a bulbous bow projecting above the water line usually has a considerably greater influence on propulsion power requirement than a submerged bulb so remember this if there is a difference between a submerged bulb and a bulb which is protruding up where bulbous bow projects above the center water line uh, sorry constructed water line the authorities may stipulate that the forward perpendicular has been taken as the point of intersection of the bulb contour with the uh, constructed water line unlike well submerged bulb this type of bulb forms can uh, thus increase the calculation length of a freeboard and classification okay we'll see the figure uh, below 
regarding the bulb height in applying the freeboard uh, regulation the length is measured at 85% of the depth to the freeboard to the freeboard deck consequently even a bulb that only approaches the OWL can still cause an increase in the calculation length of the ship with low freeboard decks is shelter deckers now projecting length we have a project in that the length projecting beyond the forward perpendicular because this this length of the bulb is the length which is projecting beyond the forward perpendicular okay there is a forward perpendicular uh, now uh, now the length projecting beyond the forward perpendicular depends on the bulb form and the fruit number you must, uh, for safety reason the bulbous boy is never allowed to project longitudinally beyond the upper end of the stern 20% in a favorable size for the projected length enlarging this size improves the resistance only negligibly today bulbs are rarely constructed without a projecting length if the recess in the center uh, constructed water line is filled in possibly by designing a straight stem line running from forward edge of the bulb to the upper edge to the stem resistance and usually be greatly reduced this method is however hardly ever used bulb axis and this bulb ratio so you can go go all through all these things okay these are not so much uh, important the position of bulb significantly affect the phase difference between the bow wave and the bulb wave the volume of bulb is a deciding factor of the amplitude of the resultant wave now you see you see here half of the bulb is filled and half the bulb is up sometime you will see the completely all the bulbous boy is completely submerged inside another advantage of bulb is that it reduces so we have discussed the advantages in advance that it creates interference now because of this interference wave which is uh, drag force also and uh, in tankers and bulkers also this bulbous bow was introduced remember this all those advantages Another advantage of bulb is that to reduce the dynamic effect of the pitch motion of a ship. In most ships, the interior of the bulb is used as a four-peak tank, ballast tank. So here you have a four-peak tank and ballast tank. Now here you will have collision bulkhead somewhere here. Okay. So what is happening uh, in collision bulkhead? Also regulation I have already covered. Please do watch that video. Uh, there is only one protrusion because. Uh, uh, this four peak tank is forward of the collision bulkhead so only one penetration in collision bulkhead as per regulation is allowed you can watch that video and that is the pipeline that is coming for the four peak tank no other uh, uh, no other holes are allowed in the collision bulkhead it is a solid piece in case of high pitching the four peak tank is often ballasted to reduce the effect of pitching okay Bulbous bow have also been advantage in housing the bow thruster. Sometimes you will have bow thrusters here. Okay, as can be seen in modern ships with bow thruster unit in naval ships that use high frequency underwater acoustics like sonar. So here you will have sonars in naval ships. Bulbous bow act as a protective housing in addition to its positive effect of drag reduction. So it reduces drag, it creates a dynamic interference so you'll have uh, ballast tanks so pitching effect dynamic effect is reduced so you'll have in naval ships you have sonar here and you'll also have um, uh, bt bow thrusters placed over here now disadvantage is here after repeated model testing uh, procedure of a wide range of hull form and bulb shape it has been found that bulbs are not efficient at all service speed means that all service speed it is not efficient that is the reason why Morse line is removing all those bulbous power in very low fruit number bulbous bow have been found to increase the drag so in when the fruit number is low then it increases the drag force now we are introducing bulbous bow to reduce the drag force but in low fruit number the drag force is increased because a bulb is only effective when it makes its own wave because at lower uh, speed it is not able to generate so much of wave and it is only effective when it is generating its own wave along with the bow wave then only there will be crust and trough crust and trough so all both will cancel there is an interference wave but at very low fruit number wave making hardly occurs but the bulb steel being below the water line increases the total weighted surface area so when total weighted surface area increases that is also acting as a resistance of the ship so in total weighted surface area is taken into account when calculating the resistance and power required for the ship to move but the bulb steel being below the waterline increase the total weighted surface area therefore contributing to the increasing its 
skin friction resistance so that is known as skin friction resistance because of the weighted surface area now vessel operating at higher speed and those with high block coefficient are often found to have bulbous bow or protruding uh, bow below the water line reduce the vessel's resistance to motion under certain conditions okay now from uh, from construction point of view when we talk about it doesn't present a difficulty in that aspect has been considered when the bulb form is designed in general however a greater degree of plate curvature is so no this is the whole together a construction so here you see the four casual deck these are the pillars this is the upper deck then you have deck girders you will find here this are the pillar this is transverse crown of the four peak tank this is the four peak tank these are stringers number in number this is breast hooks this is also an example you will be asked question what are breast hooks uh, if you don't know comment we will cover in some other video stringers wave stringers somewhere here you will find the collision bulkhead these are again transverse breast hooks and these are watertight uh, floors uh, some some are watertight floors bracket floors okay so this is the whole together all uh, construction so uh, so it is convenient cylinder form is adopted and fitted into the bow as a single unit this has in fact been done success but in general portion from contribution cell side now floors are fitted at every frame so what if they ask you do you can tell all these name of in, in terms of construction in question and the other aspect what you have to tell is that floors are fitted at every frame space in the bulb a center line wash bulkhead is introduced when bulb is large transverse are fitted at about every fifth frame in long bulbs smaller bulbs have a center line wave but not a wash bulkhead and in all bus bus bow horizontal diaphragm plates are fitted we have shown you the diagram shell plating covering the bulb has an increased thickness similar to that of a radius plate stem below the water line now this increased thickness should be in particular cover any area likely to be damaged by the anchors and chain and in designing the bow fouling of the anchor should be taken into consideration this fouling of anchor should not be occurring so today what we had uh, covered was mostly the point of uh, uh, water bulbous bow where are they located what is the significance of it what are wave making resistance how it is and it is creating interference wave at what particular speed what are the disadvantage of bulbous bow why the bulbous bow was introduced in tanker and cell also in a full form vessels so uh, all these things we covered and then we saw what are the constructional aspect of here now one more uh, in second part you will be finding about the panting and pounding arrangement where things will become more clear uh, okay so combining this and the pounding pounding arrangement the bulbous bow will get completed thank you so much